This episode has been brought to you by Fornos Law Firm, devoted to optimizing your legal results at fornoslaw.com. Welcome to Push Rim Life After Injury Podcast for April 12, 2013, Episode 25. Special guest, Adelfo Sarami, professional bodybuilder. I'm Ray Pizarro. I'm Richard Bow. We'd like to thank our audience once again for being with us. Um, once again, um, for those of you that are just tuning in, we uh, these episodes are to give people a unique perspective into life after spinal-related injuries and uh, hopefully inspire people along the way and uh, let them know that there is life after injury. It's not over just because you suffer this uh, traumatic injury. And uh, speaking of, um, you know, get, getting over their injury and someone um, inspirational here that we'd like to introduce to you guys is uh, Adelfo. Welcome. Hey, Ray. Hey, Richard. How you guys doing? Good. 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 Glad. Thanks for being here, Adelfo. Hey, my pleasure. Good. So uh, we're going to get into it. If you don't mind just talking, um, you know, sharing a little bit about your ex- your um, your your journey and, and okay. uh, how you got hurt and stuff like that. Sounds cool. good. Yeah. So how how was it for you uh, early on? With my injury? Yeah. Mm, I, how long I, you been I, hurt? I've been hurt since 2005. Um, but I always tell people it just still seems like it was like a year ago. You know, sometimes I have to take a step back because when people ask me how long my injury was, for some reason, I always say, oh, it was just like four years ago. And then when I start to count my fingers, I'm like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm like, oh man, it's almost been seven years. Where and did it time even, go? Yeah, it doesn't even feel like yeah. that, you know. Yeah. And I, when I got hurt, I was, I think, I was twenty three, twenty three, mm-hmm. and now I'm thirty, and it's just like, but I still feel like I'm twenty four or something, you know. Yeah. And so, how how was your injury? What what type of injury? Did it you was a T twelve. T12, I'm still not sure if I'm a complete or incomplete. Mm -hmm. They basically first said that I was a complete. And then once I started gaining some signs of, you know, kind of getting a A little return, a return and being able to, uh, being able to avoid more control with, you know, bowel and everything like that. Then they said, Oh, well, then you're, I think you're a complete. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what I am. T12 complete or incomplete. So, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm just a guy in a chair. So <laughs> what type of, uh, what type of accident did you have? It was a car accident. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was a passenger and, uh, got ejected mm-hmm. from the car because mm-hmm. I wasn't wearing my seatbelt and, um, I was, uh, thrown into a tree. Good. Uh, wow. back first. So that's how I broke my back. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And I woke up. It was, under some bushes and I was by a river um, and couldn't feel my legs. Yeah. Would this happen in the daytime or at night? Night. Oh, night. wow. Yeah. How it was Lucky they found you, man, at night and over there by the bushes. Yeah. It was off the San Diego freeway um, by Camp Pendleton. Oh, okay. The Los Pulgas exit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, so, wow. Yeah. It was probably around 11, 12 and... You already know at 12 a.m. You, you know something. You know, I was, I was probably up to no good. So right, right, yeah. we all are at that time. Man. If we're on the road. You young, know. young, dumb. And, you yeah, know, yeah. think you're invincible. So, yes. Did, so, um, I mean, like, how did they how did they find you? My buddy who was with me, he uh, basically was uh, climbed up the mountain mm. um, to to get help and we weren't both we and we were both in a state where you know we have been drinking Mm -hmm. and you know one thing that i am thankful for though that it was just me and nobody else was injured right um you know it was just our car that fell out we didn't hit nobody Mm -hmm. and um, that's one thing i'm really thankful for because i I don't think i'd be able to kind of stomach or look at myself in the mirror if i knew that I was the cause of somebody else's injury right, right. because of, you know, a stupid thing like, you know, drinking while, while driving and stuff like that. Right. So, um, yeah, one thing I'm real thankful for, but yeah, I went off there, but, uh, so I was therapy for you. Where did you do your rehab? Um, I did it at uh long beach Memorial. Okay. Yeah. So after my, um, kind of two week thing at a uh, scripts hospital in San Diego where they did the injury right. or where they did surgery. the surgery, 
um, they transferred me over to Long Beach, closer to family and friends. Cool. So, Good and that's deal. not a bad place to be. No, I, I did my rehab there myself. Not yeah, they, they supposedly they that. say it's uh, Rancho is the best, but I think Long Beach Memorial is the best. Well, so. yeah, you know, you also got to see how many what the what the how many people you know. Yeah. What kind of individual care you have? Yeah, yeah. I did Rancho. So what's up? What's up with that? <laughs> How was it though? Was it? I mean, you, it, you know, I, miss. I made it through. Yeah. I made it through. That's you know, it was rough times. But. I mean, but I've heard of some other places where it's just like horrible. Yeah, like, yeah. well, they don't have any clue what a spinal yeah, cord injury down, is. Down in the LA area, I have a buddy there who was. Uh, yeah. He said, "Man, they just were letting them lay in their feces and yeah, and, well, see, and urine, and nah. nurses wouldn't come until uh like thirty minutes later, and they're just laying there, and it's just like." It's yeah. one of those hood hospitals. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rancho, yeah. the staff is the yeah. staff is the best. Yeah, like, they're, they're really good. I think it was like MLK or something. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing. When you get when you get stuck in one of those uh, off hospitals, like either Kaiser, you know, yeah. or other hospitals like that, they it's hard for them to really do good work with you and know know what to do. Yeah. yeah. So you bounce back from all of that, and uh, see, so you've taken on quite a hobby here. The only thing with the... It's not a hobby anymore. The only thing with the... Um, I don't mean to cut you off, but the only thing with the rehab, though, is they they set you up so much for success. Yeah. You know, that when you get back home, when you hit a roadblock, you kind of... you, you remember. I, I, I got kind of hit with a little bit of frustration and depression because, mm-hmm. you know, in... In Long Beach Memorial, like they're so great over there, they set you up for success. Everything you're succeeding, success, you know, from being able to dress yourself, eat, um, mobility, everything. You, they set you up for success, and then everything's accessible. And then when you go into the real world, reality you know, re- check, yeah, <laughs> restaurants, home, uh, you realize it's not perfect. It's not like the rehab center, and and that that's one thing that you have to adjust, you know, adjust and prepare for is that. You know, it's it's going to be your environment is is catered to you at the rehab center. Um, but be prepared when you go back home. Um, you're gonna face a lot of obstacles and challenges. Right. Um and, and yeah, it's gonna be frustrating, a little depressing, but at the same time it's just something that you have to be able to adapt. Maybe that's uh, to. maybe that's um one of the better characteristics of Rancho because they um actually try to put real world uh roadblocks for you to try to get over when I when I was yeah. there. And I hated it at the time, yeah. but I could appreciate it a lot later. Yeah, those little outings they used to take us out yeah. on, you know, just uh, your local, what, the 31 yeah. flavor, you know, the yeah, ice cream and, shop or yeah. something, just to, you know, that's when you gain your some of your wheelchair skills, too. Yeah, yeah uh, exactly. When we're oh, from, yeah. You know that we're about the wheelchair skills. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I found out real fast. Or, lack, or lack thereof. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's right. So, so Adelfo, dude, so w- once you get out of rehab, go home, get yourself back together. When did you uh, decide uh, to pursue um, any type of like your, your bodybuilding or, or staying fit? And, and at, at first, bodybuilding wasn't my first choice. OK, I wanted I after um, Linda showed me that uh, movie uh, Murder Ball. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's what I wanted to do um, because I come from a football background yeah you know and that was the closest thing that that mimicked you know playing football so um that's what i wanted to do but then when i found out found out and <laughs> called around called different leagues and i was like hey um how could i get into this they said uh what are you and i okay. said i'm a paraplegic and they're like oh para- paraplegics can't play and i said why not <laughs> um because this is only for quadriplegics with you know limited mobility and their are you know Arms. their all extremities um he said but you could pra- he said but you could practice with us and i'm like no i don't want to practice i mean i see you guys going to the olympics and traveling i want to you want to compete yeah i want to compete i want to do that <laughs> and they're like well yeah you're not allowed and i'm like okay uh how about uh, league for paras and they're like there's no such thing and um why not because they said that if paras played we would kill each other just yeah, because probably. of our because of our mobility and exactly. you know what we our abilities and what we could do so i was pretty bummed out about that that i i couldn't compete um in in that realm so did more looking around see what i could do um there was tennis basketball 
Um, but I wasn't really good at any of those when I was an able body. So, you know, I'm probably not going to be good at it in the chair. I'll pre- probably be worse. Uh, so, uh, so after getting shot down, how did you, uh, what, what other steps did you take? I was still to- determined to find an, an outlet, right. you know, to, to, I guess, uh, scratch my competitive itch. Right. And then just browsing through YouTube, I saw, um, I came across a website or just a YouTube video of guys competing on stage. Um, they all look great, phenomenal shape and, um, were posing and competing and bodybuilding on stage. And I saw this and was in my mind, I was like, I want to do this. Uh, this is something I think I could do. And from there, I just took the ball and ran with it, did my research um, on dieting, training, um, mainly dieting because I had no idea how to, uh, you know, manipulate my diet Mm. or even anything about proper nutrition. I mean, all I knew how to do was just train. And the Uh, discipline that goes along with that, right? Yeah. So from there, I just kind of, yeah, took the ball and ran with it. Um, It took a while of, you know, researching, learning, networking, trial and error, finding out what works and what doesn't and being able to apply it. And then eventually I had the courage to do my first show in oh, the summer of 08. Um, yeah, to do my first show. Where was that? Where it was, was in uh, Las Vegas. Okay. It was called the ABA, INBA uh, Natural USA's, I think. Natural. Okay. Yeah. Was that at amateur or? Amateur level. A- amateur yeah. level, just starting off. Yeah, amateur level. How'd you do? Um, well, it was just me. Right. The promoter was like, yeah, again, I'm competitive. Right. So I asked the promoter, hey, how many guys are going to be there? And he was, yeah, there's going to be probably like four or five. So I'm, I was excited. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. there's going to be some competition. So once I get there, it was just me. Oh, no. Yeah. And it was just me. And, you know, I I always tell people I'd rather get dead last than um, winning by default right. because I have no competition, but still, down. but still it was a good experience because it, it gave me uh, a learning experience with being on stage and being comfortable and, and being able to pose in front of a crowd and, mm-hmm. and, and do your little routine. And it helped with my, um, I guess my confidence, you'd say, right. um, being able to entertain mm-hmm. in front of a, you know, big crowd. Now, now tell us about what, what does it take for you? Say you're preparing for a, uh, for a competition. How early do you start off, um, you know, training and, and, uh, getting in shape, uh, for one? Um, it's basically for me, it's a year round thing. Okay. But when you do like year round, as in staying in shape, mm-hmm. you know, maintaining, 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 maintaining a lot of things, uh, not letting yourself go. Um, but when I do start to prepare for a show, mm-hmm. I give myself at least 24, 25 weeks to prepare. Okay. So I, I like to to do it that way just because uh, it gives you more time mm-hmm. to make adjustments. Three um, to four months, something yeah, like that. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you're a, at a race against time right. to just, you know, slash calories and, and just you know, go to extremes just so you can meet your deadline with 25 weeks is more than enough to make your, be able to adjust, Mm -hmm. uh, your, your, for your body to be able to adjust, um, and just for a slow, gradual diet, you know, just cutting slow rather than again, like I said, slashing calories left and right, trying to, um, burn fat yeah because that's not that doesn't seem to be no it's not healthy at all so where did you do your majority of your uh you know weightlifting was did you hit a regular gym uh yeah uh, i was i went to a regular big box gym like la your la fitness or 24 hours so okay yeah so how was that getting in and out of the machines pretty pretty easy pretty accessible yeah yeah, yeah it's pretty accessible um a lot of the newer um um, I'm a member of LA Fitness, so a lot of their newer facilities are really wheelchair accessible, oh, good. as in space. But most of the older ones aren't. Mm. Um, as for the 24s, I know they did a lot of renovating on a lot of their facilities, so um, theirs might be pretty sweet too, wheelchair yeah. accessible. Um, but yeah, for the most part, for 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 paras, um, if you're a para, new facilities are they're they're pretty doable. Cool. Yeah. 
So do you want to talk about uh, your latest achievement, uh, going pro, and then how that was for you, that experience? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. So how was that? Uh, um, where where was it? That was, uh, it was, yeah, it was uh, March 16th. So that was like about three, four weeks ago Okay. Um, in West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, and it's a national show for guys in chairs, whatever category, uh, paras, quads, um, guys with cere guys or girls with cerebral palsy. Okay. Um, any type of disability. Wide, wide range of yeah, disability. Yeah, a, a wide range. So it's a national show where guys and girls in chairs compete. Okay. So there's pretty pretty good handful of competition year to year. Cool. So so uh, so t tell us about your your you know how how did the competition go for did you feel confident going into it that you you were ready this year to yeah to, I, to I, win yeah, or I I always feel confident every year um but this year more so because I, I felt I made all the right decisions made all the right the adjustments um you know seek the right people to help me okay. um to be able to put myself in a a great position to win so i was very confident this this year Cause so how does it work or what class are you or where you, did you compete in i am a middleweight, middleweight so i i'm about 100 i weighed in about around 140 pounds mm. usually the heavyweights weigh from one i'd like to say 175 to 180 190 okay uh light heavies uh no, light heavies is probably 175, 180, and then heavyweights are around the 190, 200 range. Gotcha. So what what does it take to become pro? Um, what do you have to win in order to achieve that title? Uh, you basically have to win your weight class, okay. either if you're light, middle, or heavy, light, heavier, heavyweight. You have to win your weight, uh, weight class first. Which you did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then once you win that, okay, uh, you have to go against all the other winners from their class is that the all around they call yeah, it or the all around yeah the okay. overall so you have to you know you have to go against the winner from the heavyweights the light, light heavyweights right. and then the uh mid oh well i was the middleweight so um yeah how many people were on stage uh at that uh, all around so do you remember well they had a heavy the heavyweight the middleweight and then the Light, light, lightweight. So that was no. There's actually only three of us. Three. Yeah, because it was okay. only three weight classes. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it was for, for yeah. that. Uh, yeah, for the wheelchair. Yeah, it was only three classes this year that was able to be assembled. How's the um, community? Is there a weight lifting community uh, for people in chairs? Uh, yeah, that you bounce ideas off of, or maybe even work out together yeah. sometimes. Yeah. A oh, okay. We're the wheelchair bodybuilding community it's a small community mm -hmm. and we all basically know each other um there's only 16 like 16 pros i was the 16th one wow so okay. there's only 16 and then the rest of the guys you know but it's growing mm -hmm. i i'm more and more i notice on facebook a lot of guys you know preparing for show guys in chairs getting yeah. ready for shows mm -hmm. and and that's a great thing i love seeing it because it just increases the competition and it just shows that people are interested and and guys in chair that you know fresh injuries that they see they're like you know it's something for them to strive and achieve and uh, or achieve and strive for now as far as uh the website goes um is is, is it the website to check out uh, you know, look into more uh bodybuilding is that still wheelchair-bodybuilding.com yeah is that the website yeah that's uh nick's site he's basically okay. one of the um forefronts the one who's always out there promoting the sport okay. trying to make it grow um so if you guys had any questions he'd be the man to contact or you could just contact myself too on facebook yeah they have it looks like they have a pretty uh, expand nice website with bios yeah. upcoming shows competition videos and also you're actually on the home page there that's that's the winner <laughs> of the of the actual show so you guys need to go out and look at the website and uh and check out all the cool stuff that's going on there with uh, with wheelchair bodybuilding, um, dude. Well, as, as we get ready to wrap up here, we'd like to, um, you know, thank Adelpho once again for being with us. And yeah, uh, do you got any place people could could you know contact you or check you out online? I mean, um, I'm still on in the works with uh, starting a website. Okay. Um, but for now, they could either contact me on Facebook. Or my email, um, a Jr. at gmail.com. And 
Um, I'm really active on um, it what is Instagram, it? In- Instagram yeah. so they could follow me at Adelfo's underscore kitchen. Okay. And if you're going to ask why it's named that is I, I do a lot of, uh, you know, I, doc- I document a lot of my, my bodybuilding, my progress at the same time, how I p- apply nutrition, you know, with, That's great. with that. And I put a lot of recipes for foods and. Oh, I'm checking um, that yeah, out. Yeah. A lot of stuff. <laughs> take, take some nuggets of information and yeah. implement it. And, and, I, and I try to um, put as much info out there as I, as I can to Good. help out, you know, everybody. But for a lot of people too, I, I'd like for um, individuals and chairs to, you know, to, to see that, Hey, you know, it, it, it's doable and it, and it can be done. Right. It's going to take do. more than a diet to get buffed. I know uh, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta, we gotta work on that quad belly and then work from there. Work I mean, there, way there, up. There, there's, there's a couple quads that are competing. Really? Yeah. I mean, they, they get pretty right too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, obviously they have a lot of, um, roadblocks that they have to, uh, get, get through work just around. because, yeah, just because of their, uh, the cool. limit to their extremities, yeah. but they, okay. they get it done. Well, I'm going to yeah. look at more of this website as, as we, uh, when we wrap up, but, um, also active member on push room, we got to get them back. I know you lost your password there for a yeah. minute, but we got to yeah. get that. Helped you with that reset. <laughs> got to reset that for you. Don't worry we about it. Lost it for like, well, I think two years. That's all right. Welcome <laughs> back, bro. It's never too late to come back home. Yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll get on that or y- you will get on that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, we're on it. So, um, dude, Rich, uh, yeah, you can find us on YouTube at Club Pushroom and of course, pushroom.com. That's right. That's our uh, s- uh, social networking site that we make people, you know, help people connect with others that are uh, living with the SAI. Yeah, other people like Related Adolfo. injuries. That's right. Um, and also, if you want to get in contact with us, you can reach us at info at pushroom.com with any questions or, or show suggestions and uh also on uh, iTunes, you know, if you got a little iPod, want to take our, our shows on the go, you can do that. Once again, Adelfo, thanks again for coming through. You got to keep us updated on your upcoming uh, journeys. And, and oh, definitely. I'd love out. to be um, on the podcast again. Yeah, yeah well, maybe yeah. we could talk a little more about nutrition and stuff and yeah, get more yeah. detail into that. Okay. And share with our community. So uh, with that, we we'll leave you guys. Thanks again for being with us and we'll catch you next time. See you next time. Bye. Peace out. <laughs>